What you're seeing coming around the corner is the brand new GWM Tank 500, a huge, luxurious, premium Chinese SUV that's just as comfortable off-road as it is on-road. Now in this video, we're gonna take a complete look around the car. We're gonna look at what makes it special, all of its really cool brand new features. We'll see how it drives on-road and off-road and then see what they're asking for it from a price point of view. So without further ado, let's get into this. But coming up, we encounter some cows that throw off the 360 camera system. We make it to the top. We get the cars nice and wet and maybe a few famous YouTubers too. We push all the buttons and see all the seats and also get to unwrap our car. <laughs> but who's gonna drive first? Now we have to decide who's going to drive first. First one wins, all right. okay? Warm it up. Yeah, then the winner decides who drives first. Okay. Right, cool. Rock, right. paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Bah. <laughs> this is the second one I've lost <laughs> in a row. <laughs> Sorry, Greg. So it's day one okay, no, of the GWM Tank 500 as well as the P500 launch. Yeah. We're starting off in the Tank 500 and I'm here with Malusi. <laughs> Bongs. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Greg? What's happening? Also featuring a lot in the video. I told you days. I'm a local here now. What, what am I, a Gregorite? Where, where are we? Did you come up with a name yet, Greg? We're not so precious, and we don't put, like to put people under pressure. So okay. yeah, right. that's fine. What's up, guys? Just a great day. Greg lost audience. again. I lost again, as you guys saw. Um, but yeah, we've got a quite a cool route going on today. Uh, we are going through. Here from George to Prince Albert, uh, we've got quite a bit of driving to do through the Otaniqua Mountain Pass. That's going to be pretty dope. Um, yeah, ending off the Swat Swatberg Pass as well. Um, so a lot of driving and a lot of scenery. Um, I think you guys are going to enjoy this content. And we weren't even on the road for 10 minutes before someone else's plastic flew off their car and landed on the front of our beautiful Tank 500. So I eventually had to pull over because... <laughs> I don't think that there was no way that's supposed to happen, but to while we're here, Mr. How much? Yeah, man. Do you want to do an unboxing for us? Yes. Check us. It's the new Tank 500. I didn't. <laughs> we're such idiots. All right, let's put it in the boot. And finally, back on the road, and time to really understand what this Tank 500 has to offer. And the very first thing that you notice when driving this car is how comfortable it is. It does tend to have a slight boat-like sensation to it, but not in a bad way. It absorbs the road imperfections really well. It leans into the corners just enough to make it not feel like it's unstable. It essentially drives like a premium SUV should. And not only does it feel premium, but it looks the part too. I'm pretty sure when they signed off this design, the answer was just yes. Like, do you want the biggest grill we've ever seen? Yes. Do you want the biggest lights to match that grill? Yes. Do you want a huge bumper with integrated lights and more chrome? Yes. And coming around the side of the car to see those huge wheels. Do you want them as bling as possible? Yes. And do you want us to add auto deployable side steps when you open up the car? Yes. And at the rear, how about additional chrome? Vertical LED rear tail lights, huge GWM branding, and an overall large SUV silhouette that just looks badass? Yes to everything and if silver or light gray aren't your color then it's also available in the secret service spec well black now this tank 500 was launched at the same time as the new p500 bucky so if you want to see that review it is live on my youtube channel but for now let's carry on with the tank okay we've just made it to the swatberg pass now we've got mr how much at the wheel uh we'll see how well he does but hopefully you enjoy the next couple scenes of just some beautiful gravel roads and some beautiful scenery let's go should I say something? It's too late. Ah, man. And it wasn't long before we left the tar roads to hit the dirt roads. Because this is the Tank 500. It's in its name. It's a 4x4. It's an off-roader. It's everything we need and more in order to see these beautiful roads, amazing scenery, and incredible passes. Enjoy. But this trip was more than just about looking at the scenery. It was to actually test out what this Tank 500 was like off-road and how it kept that luxurious feel while doing and conquering everything. And it definitely did. We made it to the top in complete comfort and complete confidence in that the car could get us there. But what goes up must go down. So we started on our descent. 
And as the terrain started to change, we put the car's drive mode into auto so that it would decide which is the best drive mode for us to be in depending on the surfaces and the conditions that we were driving in. And those conditions started to get quite moist as you can see there. But this obviously wasn't too challenging but was a lot of fun to just drive through and get some epic content. And talk about being committed to the cause. Oh Shane, you got so wet. Oh my god, what happened? <laughs> I got a little too close to the content. I'm covered in mud, so yeah, just... I think this is what people need to appreciate is what you have to go through for good content, so... People don't know this, Greg. They don't know the... the, the nice, the, man. The, the suffering you go through, but uh, it's all right. I mean, look, you're as wet as what the car is. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. That's what the tank lifestyle is all about. Now, if you ever get the opportunity to go through the Swartberg Pass, just do it. You won't regret it. Just look how incredible these views are. I mean, it's almost the perfect setting for this new car. Look how good it looks amongst these mountains. Now there's a lot that these two cars have in common because they're built off of the same platform, which in this case is the two liter hybrid that puts out 255 kilowatts and 648 newton meters. And yes, this hybrid setup you can drive in electric only, mostly in and around parking lots or when you're pulling off or stopping at a traffic light. Now what's important to note from this particular slide here is the comparison of vehicle size compared to what the price point is. And here you can see the Tank 500 is on the far right because it is the longest of all of them. But when comparing spec for spec, it's one of the lowest priced vehicles. Okay, now with all of that admin out the way, let's take a quick look at this beautiful interior. And here you'll be welcomed by a leather steering wheel with tank branding on it, a huge infotainment with all your car settings, Apple CarPlay, 360 cameras, an actual little clock, separate buttons for your climate control, a really nice looking wooden veneer dashboard, wireless phone charging, your 9-speed gear shifter, as well as all the buttons in the world for everything. From your low range to your differential locks, your tank turns and seat heating and cooling. You also get a full-size panoramic sunroof that does open and slide. But something that will surprise you is how comfortable and soft these seats are. They're Nappa leather, they're high quality, and they're very, very comfortable. They've also got a massaging function and are fully electric with memory function. And there's those standard deployable side steps that we spoke about. And also the Infinity sound system, which comes equipped with 12 speakers in total. And then taking a look into the rear of the car, the comfort, styling and Nappa leather continues. The windows have got blinds, the passengers in the rear have got their own air conditioning system as well as cooled seats. Now they don't have heated and cooled together, they only have the cooled function which is weird because the P500 Bucky has got heated and cooled but you don't get that here. A little strange. And as I mentioned these seats are just as comfortable as those in the front. And the space in the rear here is incredible. You also don't have a huge tunnel that you have to kind of move your feet over in the center. So all of your passengers have got a lot of space, including a lot of legroom. Now take in that look from the rear. A very good looking interior. But the functionality doesn't stop there because this is a seven seater with those two rear seats electronically deployable quite easily, which I didn't know until I then found the buttons to lift it up, which is here on the side. And once you click them, they rise up from the floor at quite a respectable speed. Watch this. And then a quick look into the boot. By a simple push of the button here, the whole boot opens up as a door to the side and not like a proper tailgate that goes up and down. But in here, you'll see that you've even got buttons to do the seats from the back on the left here. So you can move them from the back, but you can also move the seats from the middle row like I showed you earlier. So depending on where you're standing, you're able to move those seats around, which is a really nice touch. And with those seats down, you can see that you have ample room here for as much storage as you need for any trips that you go on. We wanted to try out some of the cool off-road features too. So within the expert menu, we found Drift, which here just lets you loosen up the rear end a bit and gets you to go sideways. Now, we're also not professional, so we didn't do it perfectly, but it was still a lot of fun. And then there's the tank turn, which allows you to have the smallest turning circle possible by slightly locking the inside wheel and moving it and locking it to give you a small turn like a tank would. Just watch the inside wheel there. Okay, driving the Tank 500. Now, I've had my turn to drive it. We've actually both driven it for a, quite a while now, part of yesterday and today. Um, and I think something that definitely stands out um, to us because we've chatted about it is the ride comfort. 
Now, the first thing we thought when we got in here was that it had air suspension because now this is a big premium SUV and that normally comes on one of those. But it actually doesn't. Yeah, we yeah, find that it's just standard coil suspension, but the way that it's been set up and with the drive modes and the dampening, it's very, very good. And I think that's what stands out for us is yeah, I how it drives. The suspension is my favorite thing about the, the 10 500. Ah, they nailed it. This is nice. Like, especially yeah. driving around town, the highway, even off road, it's, it's, it's really nice. This is, they got yeah. it right here. In the Baki, I'm sure we spoke about it there. It's a bit firmer, but here, uh, uh, it's nice, man. It's nice. Yeah, but you can hear more about the Bucky in the other video. Um, but speaking of off-road, so we have taken this off-road too. We did some um, driving on the trails and some dirt roads, and the comfort continues. So depending on whatever drive mode you go into, um, it kind of adapts. You can put it into auto, so then also detects the terrain and puts the car in its best setting to obviously handle what road you're on and to keep you as comfortable as possible. Um, but you also get like a bespoke off-road menu so inside there you can also go and change um, the stability you can change the steering input you can change acceleration you can also go into like deep off-road settings and just how the car feels it's also got low range you can also adjust um, what is it the, the, the differentials in the front and the rear so it's also very easy to access and easy to work on um, through here, so I think a novice would even be able to go off road. It has buttons. It, <laughs> it has buttons. It has actual yeah, buttons, guys. Like, Look. Yeah, despite the massive screen, buttons. They still kept actual buttons, and I give them a thumbs up for that because for some reason people think buttons are not cool. I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, it has buttons, easy to use. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, even even like if even if you bought the car today, you'll be able to figure out what's yeah. going on here. Does Nothing that does like that deserve a well done? Well done, GW. Yeah. Or should I say tank? Well done, tank. Well done. <laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah, I mean, from a driving point of view, we chatted about that. It's uh, from a comfort point of view. I mean, we chatted about that, that, and that's good. But powering this is a two-liter um, hybrid setup, so it's a self-charging hybrid, and that electric power is there to give you extra boost um, when you need it most, and also to help the car run more efficiently, so it doesn't run off of the engine. Um, they claim 255 kilowatts and 648 newton meters of torque, mm -hmm. um, which is respectable, but I think you don't really feel it too much. Now, the car is very heavy, so you have to take that into account. So you don't get the acceleration and the speed that I think we would be expecting from those sort of performance numbers. But yeah. the car definitely carries itself well. I can't say that it's underpowered, but I think you just, you, I think you, you'd want a little bit more power especially with the numbers that they're giving you so yeah, when you hear 255 hard to explain. Yeah. you're expecting like when i put my foot down like you know no completely but, yeah yeah it is what it is it is what it is um and it's also it's the same engine that's in the tank 300 so i feel like you'd get a little bit more better performance out of the 300 than this one because it's also a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter so yeah that's it on the driving the comfort and the performance enjoy yeah. the rest of the video oh, there's the airport yeah. we're on our way home ah. <laughs> But we weren't home just yet without a little detour, which is where we encountered our cute little furry friends who decided to take over the road and really put our 360 camera system to the test because it really had no idea what was going on here. It was just beeping for days, but I guess it was doing its job. Now, if you're in the market or want to get yourself a GWM Tank 500 or the new P500, then go check one out on changecars.co.za. They're a website that sells new and used cars, but the best thing about them is that they vet and check every single dealership that sells cars on their websites. So you know exactly who they are and what they're selling, making sure that the quality of cars you're getting is always of the highest standard. Their website's also a good thing for everything automotive. So you can go and watch car reviews, you can also go and read articles, you can do financial things, like even going to see what you can afford per month through their finance calculator. And if you've got a quote from any dealership that's not on change cars, bring it to them and not only will they match it, but they'll beat it too. So go check out changecars.ca.za. They've got a lot to offer there and they're also a proud partner of Greg Dennis Reviews. Now, before we end off the video, I wanted to chat a little bit about the fuel consumption. Now, GWM claims 8.9 liters, but we were only able to get about 12.8 on our last trip back towards the airport. You can even see up to the last 30 days. So that's it for this video on the Tank 500 launch. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a little bit more about the all new Tank 500. And if you did, please really drop a like below. And if you want to see more videos like this and other car-related content, then please make sure that you're subscribed. 
And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.